Hello everyone, welcome to this Big Data and Hadoop tutorial series presented by me Damon from Edureka. In this video, we are going to focus on MapReduce 2 or YAN. But before we get started, if you like our video, please do not forget to subscribe to our Edureka YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to never miss out on any updates. Also, if you guys are interested in our online certification training, do check out the description share in the link below. So without any further delay, Let's get on with today's agenda. In this lecture video, I will be talking about YARN overview. You'll be seeing what is MapReduce 1 execution framework, what is YARN. We will be talking about YARN architecture and its components. Then what is MapReduce 2 and how does it look like running word count application in MR2 or MapReduce version 2. So let's start off with the overview of YARN. YARN is a core component of Hadoop 2 and is added to provide improved performance in the Hadoop world. So YARN is the next generation of Hadoop computing platform which offer various advantages as compared to classic MapReduce engine in the first version of Hadoop. Now let us see in details what is YARN and what are the advantages it offer over classic MapReduce. Before learning the benefits of YARN or the limitation of MapReduce version 1, and let us see the MapReduce 1 execution framework. We have a master daemon job tracker which is responsible to assign and track task execution progress. Then we have the slave daemon called the task tracker and they run on system where data nodes reside. Now they are responsible for child JVM to execute MapReduce and other intermediate tasks. In MapReduce 1, Job Tracker takes care of both job scheduling and task progress monitoring. So, next thing we're going to talk about is the limitation of Hadoop 1.0. So, let us see one by one the limitation of Hadoop 1.0 or MapReduce 1. The number one we have is slow processing speed. In Hadoop, with apparel and distributed algorithm, the MapReduce process large data sets that we need to perform. Map and reduce. Map reduce requires a lot of time to perform these tasks, thereby increasing latency. Data is distributed and processed over the cluster in map reduce, which increases the time and reduces the processing speed. Number two is we have support for batch processing only. Now, Hadoop support batch processing only, it does not process stream data and hence overall performance is slower. Third point is no real time data processing. Now Apache Hadoop is for batch processing which means it takes a huge amount of data as input, process it and then produce the result. Now the fourth point is its latency. In Hadoop, MapReduce framework is comparatively slower since it is for supporting different pharma, structure and huge volumes of data. In MapReduce, Map takes a set of data and convert it to another set of data where individual elements are broken down into key value pairs and reduce tasks, the outputs from the map as input and process further and map reduce requires a lot of time to perform these tasks thereby increasing latency. Now the fifth point is not easy to use. In Hadoop, map reduce developers need to hand code for each and every operation which makes it very difficult to work. Now the sixth point is security. In Hadoop, it is challenging in managing the complex application. Now, if the user doesn't know how to enable a platform who is managing the platform, your data can be a huge risk. App storage and levels, Hadoop is missing encryption, which is a major point of concern. Point number seven is it's vulnerable by nature. Hadoop is entirely written with Java, a language most widely used. Hence, Java being most heavily exploited by cyber criminals and as a result implicated in numerous security breaches. Now the last and eighth point is its lengthy line of code. Now Hadoop has around 1,20,000 line of codes. Now the number of line produce numbers of bugs and it will take more time to execute the program. So these are the limitations of Hadoop version 1. So let's quickly go ahead and see what is YARN. YARN stands for yet another resource negotiator and it has been introduced in Hadoop 2.0. It is a layer that separates the resource management and the processing component layer. MapReduce 2 moves resource management like infrastructure to monitor nodes, allocate resources and schedule jobs into YARN. 
So MapReduce version 2 was simply the real implementation of classical MapReduce engine. YAN are basically taking the function of resource management apart from the MapReduce processing. Now let us see what is the motivation behind MapReduce version 2 or what are the limitations of MapReduce version 1. Firstly is the scalability bottleneck. So the large Hadoop cluster reveal the limitation involving your scalability bottlenecks caused by having a single job tracker and according to Yahoo, the practical limits of such design are reached with the clusters of 5000 nodes and 40,000 tasks running concurrently. Another problem it faced was that the computation with resources on each slave nodes are divided by a cluster administrator into a fixed number of map and reduce slots. So nodes can't run map task and map loss at any given moment. Even if no reduce task is running, there is not a proper utilization of resources. Another most important problem was that Hadoop was designed to run map reduce jobs only. So Job Tracker is an application which is built for MapReduce framework only. And the problem arises when a non-MapReduce application tries to run in this framework. Now the third and the last limitation or motivation for a MapReduce version 2 is that Yarn opened up Hadoop to other types of distributed application beyond MapReduce. Yarn was introduced to overcome these problems and Yarn bring in the concept of a central resource management. Now we will go ahead and understand the YARN architecture. Now coming on to the YARN architecture, you can see the YARN architecture. Your global resources manager turns into a master daemon and attract how many light nodes and resources are available. Basically job tracker one responsibility is split into two. The resource manager which manages the resource allocation in the cluster and the application master. It manages the resource needs of individual application. There's something called the load manager which is generalized into task tracker. Node manager provides computational resources in the form of container and manages processes running in these container. And the container executes an application specific process. So we can see that in MapReduce, one job tracker takes care of both job scheduling and job process monitoring. But in case of YARN, these responsible are handled by separate entities the resource manager and application manager. So after understanding the YARN architecture, we shall see its YARN components. So if you see the YARN components present in the diagram, we have the clients which submit the map reduce job, the resource manager, which is used to manage the use of resources across the cluster. So it is the ultimate authority in resource allocation. The container that is you can say the package of resources including your RAM, CPU, network and hard disk etc. Which can run different types of tasks like maths task or the reduce task. In the node manager, node manager is used to oversee the containers running on the cluster node and the application master. It negotiates with the resource manager for resources and run application specific processes like map or reduce tasks in those cluster. Now let us see the components one by one. These are the YARN daemons. So resource managers has two components. One is your scheduler and the other is your application master or application manager. So a resource manager is a global resource scheduler and it manages and allocate cluster resources. Resource manager is responsible for tracking resources and clusters and also scheduling these application like map reduce task. These resources are coming in from multiple machines whenever the relevant data is stored and in node manager is running. Resource manager is a global resource scheduler and it manages and allocates cluster resources. Resource manager is responsible for tracking the resource and cluster and also scheduling the application like map reduce task. Now these resources are coming in from multiple machine wherever the relevant data is stored and in node manager is running. Now what does the scheduler do? So we have different kinds of scheduler here. We have basically a capacity scheduler, we have a fair scheduler etc. So there are a different scheduler which takes care of resource allocation. So your scheduler is responsible for allocating resources to various running applications. Now imagine a particular environment where you have different teams or different departments 
which are working on the same cluster. So we could call the cluster as a multi-tenant cluster. And on the multi-tenant cluster, you will have different applications which will want to run simultaneously accessing the resources of the cluster. Now, how is that managed? So there has to be some components which has a concept of pooling or queuing so that different departments or different users can get dedicated resources or can share resources from the cluster. So scheduler is responsible for allocating resources to various running applications. Now it does not perform monitoring or tracking of the status of applications. That's not part of the scheduler. It does not offer any guarantee about restarting the failed task due to hardware or network or any other failures. Scheduler is mainly responsible for allocating resources. Then we have the application manager. Now this is responsible for accepting job submission. Now as I said at a high level, we could always say resource manager, they are doing everything. They are allocating the resources, it is negotiating the resources, it is also taking care of listening to the client and taking care of job submissions. But who is doing this in the real life scenario? It is these components, so we have the application manager which is responsible for accepting job submission. It negotiate the first container for executing the applications, specific application master. It provides the service for restarting the application master container on failure. Now, how does this work or how do these things happen in coordination? Now, as I said, your node manager is the slave process, which will be running on every machine. Slave is tracking the resources, what it has, it is tracking the processes, it is taking care of running the jobs and basically it is tracking each container resource utilization. So let us understand what is a container. Basically a container is a collection of resources like CPU, memory, disk which could be used or which already has a data and network etc. So your node manager is basically looking into the request from the application master and is basically granting the request or allocating these containers. Now again, you could have different sizing of the container. Let us take an example here. So as I mentioned from the total resource, which are available for a particular node, some portion of the resources are allocated to the node manager. So let us imagine there is a node where node manager as a processing slave is running. So from the total resources which the node has, some portion of RAM and CPU core is basically allocated to the node manager. Let's say the total RAM is 100 GB out of which 60 GB is assigned to your CPU core and another 40 GB is assigned to your node manager. So there are these settings which are given in the yarn hyphen site file. Application master which is per application, it is the one which uses the resources. It is basically manages or uses these resources for individual application. So remember if you have 10 application running on your yarn, then it will mean that there are 10 application masters. One master is responsible for each application. Your application master is the one which is also interact with the scheduler to basically know how much amount of resources will be allocated from one application and your application master is the one which uses these resources. But it can never negotiate for more resources to node manager. Application manager cannot do that. It had to always go back to resource manager if it needs more resources. So it's always the resource manager which allocates the extra resources. So let us go ahead and understand what is MapReduce version 2. With Yarn, there is no longer a single job tracker to run jobs and a task tracker to run tasks of the jobs. The old MapReduce 1 framework is now rewritten to run within submitted application on top of yarn and this application is now renamed as MapReduce version 1 or simply MR2. It is the same MapReduce execution you have been working with except that each job now controls its own destiny via its own application master. Now taking care of execution flow such as scheduling tasks, handling speculative executions and failures etc. Now it is more isolated and scalable model than the MR1 or the MapReduce version 1 system where there was only one job tracker who did all the resources management, scheduling and task monitoring work. Let us see how our word count application is running in MapReduce2. So we see here there is one resource manager 
then the master nodes the slave nodes have on data node you have the load manager so in HDFS or the Hadoop disk file system we have a file name as my data on which you want to perform work on jobs and its task is stored across two loads that is data load 1 and data node 2 now to run an application on yarn a client contacts the resource manager and asks it to run an application master process now the resource manager then finds a node manager that can draw launch the map reduce application master in the container now the map reduce application master requests for resources from the resource manager and finally it launches container on the data nodes which can be any of the data launches the container for the map reduce stuff the application master and the map reduce task run in container that are scheduled by the resource manager and are managed by the node manager same way word count reduce task and are also generated or launched by the map reduce application master on the container if you see on a higher level there are five independent entities client which submit a map reduce job in the yarn resource manager now which coordinates the allocation of computer resources on the cluster in the yarn node manager which launches and monitor compute containers on machines in the cluster and the application master which coordinate the task running the map reduce jobs and finally the hdfs the distributed file system which is used to sharing job files between other entities now with this we've come to an end of this particular tutorial if you have any queries regarding this session then please feel free to write them down in the comment section till then happy learning i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to edureka channel to learn more happy learning